So now in this video, we're going to look at a 555 timer with an adjustable output. Uh, we'll come back to that. But in uh, any case, we have uh, 5 volts at the supply right there. And um, looks like, you know, at any given time, it's about 8 milliamps of current that we are consuming. So I mention that because um, for a future video, a past video in any case, I had a lower value uh, resistor right there and a, a smaller uh, value capacitor. But in any case, that had higher current going. I couldn't go above 5 volts. But here, we have a 1,000 ohm resistor. In fact, we'll do a step-by-step uh, -step build of this. Um, but to begin with, there you can see the output is uh, alternating between high and low. And we can adjust that. So right now, we have the maximum resistance we can set when it comes to the uh, capacitor there. Half the time this 1000 ohm uh, resistor factors in on that too. And I think me bumping stuff kind of uh, threw stuff off. So I'm going to put a capacitor to the uh, supply rail. So that's just going to larger value capacitor would be better. Um, but I have that on hand right there. So any case, um, right now we have the uh, maximum resistance uh, we can set. And now I'm lowering the resistance. So this is wired as a variable resistor. Again, we'll uh, come back to that. And uh, as I lower the resistance more and more, then um, the majority of the timing, the uh, red LED is not lit or is lit longer than the blue one, I am pretty sure, right there. And um, so that is because it's taking the capacitor longer to charge now than to discharge. It's discharging pretty much instantly while it's discharging the blue LED is lit up. Um, so it's just lit up for a, a very small fraction of a second uh, right there. So now to begin with, uh, we just got the jumper cables on there and uh, the main component. This is an NE555 timer. I don't think even if I move that jumper, you could read it, but you can kind of see the letters there. So first off, we have to power it. Again, we got five volts, positive supply to pin eight over there. Uh, pin one, you can see the little divot up there. Sometimes there's a little dot there and a little divot. Um, so it works its way one to four and then uh, five to eight. If you have a longer one, you just keep working your way down before working your way up. Uh, and then negative supply to pin number one. So that powers the integrated circuit, sets the two thirds and uh, one third supply voltage uh, points. If you don't apply a voltage to pin five, you can adjust the, uh, I believe it's the one third point, but uh, in any case, you can, or uh, two third point, I think. But in any case, you can adjust it. So um, now uh, let's go back to this one. This is the reset pin right there. You need to uh, disable that for this circuit. If it gets a low enough voltage, um, I think it has to be pretty much uh, ground, direct connection to ground almost, um, then it's gonna hold the output low no matter what. We don't want that. So we put it to the positive supply, that makes it so the reset pin doesn't do anything. And then here's just our jumper um, to connect the output to that other uh, breadboard right there. And then uh, pin two sets the output high when it senses one third or less of the supply voltage as I said before, um, if you don't change it, of course. And then uh, pin six sets the output low if it senses two thirds of the supply voltage. So when you see the capacitor, it's bouncing between one third and two thirds supply voltage thanks to these two pins. So we tie them together so they always see the same voltage. And then this jumper goes to pin seven, that's the discharge pin. It can connect to a uh, ground, which it does when the output is low. And then it's off when it's not connected to ground. And that's how the capacitor charges. We'll look at that. This little jumper here that's going to pin seven will go to um, one of the fixed positions on that trim pot I showed you. The uh, variable resistance that we get will be directed to the other uh, jumper that will be attached to the wiper. So now let's get uh, to some of the timing uh, circuitry. Um, actually finishing the timing circuitry. So I'm gonna use a 1000 ohm uh, resistor um, this partially slows down the uh, timing right there. But uh, the vast majority of the timing is going to be determined uh, by this trim pot. So you can, uh, this is a 10,000 ohm resistor. If you go from uh, that point to that point right there, the wiper that you spin right here, that is uh, connected to this pin right there. The wiper can slide along that resistive element. So if you set this halfway, that means that uh, out of that 10,000 ohms of resistance, this pin would see 5,000 ohms between those two. And then those two would see 5,000 ohms. You know, it splits up uh, the resistance between the pins. 
So you can use all three of them for a voltage divider. In this case, we're just going to use two for a variable resistor. And when the arrow is pointing at uh, this pin, that means that the wiper is basically connected directly to that pin. Those two points, there's practically no resistance. So uh, we can set that there. So that is where I'm going to set that bottom pin. And uh, hopefully this focuses. There we go. And um, actually, I'm going to move this back one spot. And we... Uh, I wanted to kind of run another fixed uh, jumper. We're going to increase the resistance now. But, you know, this is kind of awkward there. It'd be a little tricky for me too. So what I'm going to do is uh, just plug this uh, jumper wire. So if it's just a, a little solid piece of metal there that you pluck and put into the board, they call those cables. And then if it's a long uh, flexible right there, it's called a jumper wire. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, at least that's how I usually see it referred to. It may not always be. So as I said before, 1,000 ohm resistor, 10,000 ohm trim pot. So right now it's set to 10,000 ohms. So you can see we got uh, the resistor coming to the jumper, going up there to the a variable resistor. Now that we have it set to 10,000 ohms, that means it has to go through 10,000 ohms of resistance. So while charging, 10,100 ohms of resistance. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we grab uh, the capacitor and uh, that'll determine how long it takes the capacitor to charge those two together. Now, when uh, the output goes low, so I'm gonna move this jumper really quick. When the output goes low, blue LED lights up, that pin seven right there also connects to ground. So when it does any current getting through that 1000 ohm resistor, just goes right to ground, that's wasted uh, current. That's why I didn't wanna use a lower value uh, resistor for this particular circuit. Now, when the capacitor charges, outputs high, to two thirds of the supply voltage, then it sets the output low. Pin seven also connects to ground. So all the current, as I said before, through that resistor goes to ground. With the capacitor, it discharges through the uh, trim pot. So right now it's set to 10,000 ohms of resistance. This is not part of the discharge process. So it discharges through 10,000 ohms. Actually, capacitor to the jumper, and it makes it to uh, that jumper. So it's gonna discharge a little bit quicker than it takes to charge. In this case, if I drop the resistance to nothing, then you know it takes relatively long for the capacitor to charge, but we have a direct connection to ground almost right there Well, it discharges. So very brief period of time, um, but you should probably, you know, always have like a little uh, resistance right there just to uh, prevent high currents as much as possible. Now, we uh, come over here, but these tend to be pretty resilient, even if you briefly short a capacitor. But the smaller the value, the better if you're going to uh, be shorting capacitor. So we got a blue LED. Uh, long lead, the anode, is going to be up. Right now, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's uh, up higher because I tend to work more positive down towards more negative. Long lead anode, short lead cathode, short lead to ground. We're going to take a 1000 ohm resistor because the uh, blue LEDs tend to be pretty bright. So we're going to limit current more for the blue LED 1000 there. Also, the output connects to ground better than the positive supply for the NE555 timer. Uh, blue or uh, red LED, long lead anode going to the uh, output right there where the jumper comes across. Short lead cathode down one spot. So we're gonna lose a little bit of voltage because it doesn't output high all the way to five volts, you know, probably closer to four. And um, that's one reason why we're using 220. But also, even if you put the same current through a uh, red LED and a blue LED, I think this will show up closer if I come from this direction. Um, even at the same current, red LED is a lot less bright than the blue LED. So lower value resistor. We're gonna kind of shoot if you're just looking at resistor values for you know about four times the current. You know we'll probably get maybe uh, like two and a half, maybe three. So in any case, um, I didn't or I did turn the power supply voltage off. You should turn the uh, power supply voltage off while you're building. Again, this is just kind of help steady the voltage at the rail. If I bump there, you can see I can mess things up. But it's even worse if I don't have a capacitor. A much larger capacitor could have absorbed that. But yeah, in any case there, you can see we got the about five volts that turned back on. The LEDs are flashing and uh, you know, I, I should have realized it. If I wasn't talking and stuff, I would have realized 
they're not flashing so the power obviously couldn't have been applied but uh, until I applied it but there you can see you lower the uh, resistance uh, red LED is going to be on longer but still it's not terribly long because that's a 1000 ohm resistor and a uh, 100 microfarad uh, capacitor can't remember if I said that or not that's what that is 100 microfarad and uh, there you can see you know it's looks like red is pretty much on steady it's off for such a short period of time you can't really tell that it's off I can see like a little flicker in person but I can definitely see that's really flickering so it's just on real briefly and then off for you know relatively long time but uh, not long you know but that's on relatively short for how long it is off and uh, there you can see we got adjusted so any case I think I mentioned uh, everything, but uh, these are all stuff you should learn like individually. I just put it uh, together right there. But if you're new to building circuits, hopefully this is uh, helpful for putting them on the breadboard. Usually I just kind of show the circuit and show the uh, schematic. Um, at some point you should just be able to look at schematics and build circuits on your own once you get a technique for putting them on the breadboard. Somebody else will do something else with this uh, trim pot especially and um you know who knows what they come up with uh they'll come up with something that uh, you'll like better than this uh, probably for sure i just thought of this right now there might be a better way to wire it up but i i don't think this is bad either so in case rambled on long enough thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos i'm posting the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot i'll see you uh, in the next video